Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nonic equation. But don't worry, this is uh, not an ordinary nonic. Unfortunately, we don't have a nonic formula. We don't have the octic. We don't have the desic. We don't even have a quintic formula. Anyways, in general, I mean. But this equation can be simplified a great deal because this is kind of like a, what do you call it? A bi-quadratic. This is kind of like a tri cubic maybe, something like that. Anyways, we can set x cubed equal to y, and this becomes y cubed minus 7y plus square root of 6 equals 0. That greatly simplifies the problem, at least we end up with a cubic, which means you can use the cubic formula. If you want to use the cubic formula, the Cardano, the Tartaglia, all these Italian guys, whoever owns the formula, um, you can use it, be my guest but we're gonna do it a little differently. We're gonna use a really cool method which sometimes apply to these kinds of equations. Since this is a math Olympiad problem, obviously the special method is going to apply. And this is what it is. So when you have an equation like a cubic like this, especially with the square root of something, it looks complicated. But the relationship between the coefficients should give you an idea and you should always look for these kinds of things. And I'm talking about the 6 and the 7. I ignore the radical for now. 6 and 7, they're consecutive integers. Isn't that cool? So 6 plus 1 is 7, in other words, right? Let's go ahead and write, even though that's very arithmetic and simple. This is important. So what, what does that mean? It means that I can actually associate uh, these two coefficients, this one and this one. Obviously, you're going to uh, include the negative as well. How, you may ask, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the radical because I can square it and turn it into something without a radical. So let's go ahead and call this number A. Obviously, you can call it T, you can call it Z, Epsilon, whatever you want. But I'm going to call it A. And that's going to give me the other coefficient, 7. So I'm going to square both sides first. That's going to give me 6 equals A squared. But I do need 7, so algebra, arithmetic, whatever you want to call it tells us to add 1 to both sides, so 7 can be expressed as a squared plus 1. Awesome. This is so cool, and you're going to realize that it's actually real cool when we plug it in. Let's go ahead and do it. So replace square root of 6 with a and 7 with a squared plus 1. So it becomes y cubed minus 7y, which can be written as a squared plus 1y, plus a. And you might be asking, what is so cool about this equation? It looks even more complicated because we introduced a parameter, a second variable, which is actually kind of uh, permanent, not permanent, but we're not going to solve for it. We're going to back substitute it. So it's kind of temporary, but it seems to complicate things. Well, here's the thing. We have a cubic, but we can turn it into a, listen carefully, we can turn this cubic into a quadratic because of a squared. And that is really awesome. And that's why this is a math Olympiad problem. Anyway, some people say like, is this an Olympiad for whatever? Fill in the blanks. This is an Olympiad problem, whatever you call it. Doesn't matter. Okay. So y cubed minus a squared y minus, oh, come on notability. Don't do this to me. Am I, what am I doing? Did I do something wrong? Okay, maybe I waited for too long. Okay, so here's what I get when I distribute this. My goal is to turn this into a quadratic. So let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side with a squared being the main variable and y being the coefficient. So write it like this. y a squared, y, you know y. And then plus, minus, obviously this is going to be negated, minus 1a, just a. And then everything else is just going to be negated. So it's going to be like plus y minus y cubed. Make sense? Now, a is my main variable. If you want, I can go ahead and so I'm gonna go over this, and that way you'll get to see the main, main variable. So we're going to solve this as a quadratic in a. And you can do this trick all the time if it's applicable. So let's go ahead and write the solution in terms of a, or I mean a in terms of y. Negative b, the coefficient of a, negative 1, which is 1, plus minus the square root of b squared, that's 1, minus 4ac, we got, we got to be careful here, minus 4 times y times y minus y cubed. Okay, 
Again, this looks a little complicated, but don't worry, 2y, because the coefficient of a squared is a, okay? That's kind of confusing, but this is the quadratic formula. Now, let's go ahead and focus on the discriminant, what's under the radical. Delta or discriminant is this, because if you can simplify this, things are going to uh, be easier. And guess what? This can be simplified, don't worry. Minus 4y squared plus 4y to the fourth. Let me write it this way, and hopefully you're going to see better. 4y to the fourth minus 4y squared plus 1. Now, if you can see that this is a perfect square, that is perfect. If you can't, that's perfectly fine. This is 2y squared minus 1 quantity squared. Always be on the lookout for these kinds of things. If you have a discriminant, always check if it's a perfect square or not, because that's very helpful. So discriminant is a perfect square, which means we can square root very easily from here, right? We can go ahead and square root it just like boom. So let's go ahead and write a one more time. 1 plus minus the square root of this squared, which is going to give us what's inside, but the plus minus will take care of the two square roots, and that is divided by 2y. And this is amazing. Look, solving for y was really hard because that was cubic, but solving for a was a lot, uh, a lot easier because it was quadratic. You see? You can invert a problem and turn it into something easier, like Fermat's last theorem. Anyways, that's way too complicated. You can't compare. So from here, we get two solutions. Let's go ahead and write them. A equals 1 plus 2y squared minus 1 over 2y. That simplifies. Uh-oh, great deal. A equals y. That is beautiful, don't you think? Okay, please let me know. And the second solution is going to be 1 minus 2y squared plus 1. You have to negate the one inside the parentheses. Be careful. This is 2 minus 2y squared over 2y. Dividing by 2 gives us 1 minus y squared over y. Not too bad. This is equal to a. Not too bad. Okay. So we got two solutions for a. Now, what is a? a is a constant, isn't it? Okay. Remember, a is square root of 6. Uh, you forgot, right? I know. I forgot it too. Now, when a problem is too long, sometimes you forget these things. But that's why it's important to take notes. a equals square root of 6. And now I can go ahead and replace it with that, and this gives me y equals square root of 6. And isn't that amazing? Like, we just got y like that. Bam. But we're not looking for y, by the way, but we'll get to that later. Let's go ahead and solve this easier problem first. Okay, let's do the second equation. 1 minus y squared over y is equal to square root of 6. This is quadratic. Come on, you can do it. 1 minus y squared is equal to square root of 6y. Put the y squared on the positive side and solve this quadratic and you'll get the y. One solution is this, and the other solutions are negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is six, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four ac plus four. Okay, that is gonna be like really radical and that's gonna be negative square root of six plus minus square root of 10 divided by two. Cool, cool, those are the y values. We got three solutions to this quadratic? Well, it is cubic. <laughs> so we got three solutions. Okay, okay. What is y? y is hmm, x cubed. Yeah, it's not super bad. y is x cubed. Let's go ahead and back substitute. y is x cubed. Don't forget that. So we got y equals square root of 6. y equals square root of 6 equals x cubed. x is equal to the cube root of square root of 6, which is the sixth root of 6, or 6 to the power 1 over 6. You're lucky number. Okay, that's one of the solutions. And the other solution is, uh-oh, that's not very good, but that's okay. This is going to be one of the solutions. Let's write the positive first. This is x cubed. So x is going to be the cube root of this number. And don't worry, negative numbers can be cube rooted easily. They're just going to be negative. This is another solution. And the third one is just going to be the cube root of the same number with a minus sign in between. And you will be done and we'll be done and we can go home. Okay? <laughs> All right, great. So those are going to be the three solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Comment, like, and subscribe. CLS. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.